Hello YouTube world, this is Logic Crazy, and I'm Jonathan, and here's yet another tutorial on creating a chess engine. This tutorial will not be Java specific, um, but rather it will be dealing with the uh, background, uh, basically the methodology uh, of how to create a uh, generate moves. Um, not generate in such as uh, one ply deep, but as in um, searching multiple moves ahead. And this is what makes chess engines strong. Um, and it will somewhat mimic the way that a human thinks. Now, when the human thinks, it looks at a chessboard and says, well, I could move my pawn forward two moves, and then they might respond by moving their uh, knight, let's say. Um, and we, we go back and forth saying, I can do this, they would respond with this. And different people search at different depths. And obviously, the deeper you can search, uh, the better, more chances you are that you will make a, a good move if you're uh, evaluating uh, it properly. And so, uh, searching deep is something where engines shine. They are very good at brute force calculations. Um, they're not good at evaluating a chess position. Humans have this thing, kind of an intuition. They can look at a board and just instantly tell you if it's a good move or a bad move, much better than a computer can do. A computer doesn't have a sense of the game. Um, it doesn't have strategies that it enjoys using, those sorts of things. And so uh, it's very good at just brute search, search deep, search hard, and come up with every possible response, and hopefully that will overcome its, uh, its problems in rating and stuff. Obviously, you want rating to be fairly accurate, and, and engines do that, but uh, searching deep uh, greatly strengthens an engine. And so uh, this is a representation of a tree diagram, and I have to uh, uh, say uh, a big thank you to uh, Brucey e. Rolson uh, for uh, this uh, descriptive uh, uh, web page. I've posted a link to this website in the description below. And um, this is uh, just an excellent tutorial on exactly what alpha beta pruning is. And uh, But first, I will explain to you what this tree diagram is like, and then some uh, al uh, mini max theory, and followed by alpha beta. Um, in this tree diagram, we see we have an initial board, you can imagine. And, uh, uh, and uh, the circles and the squares, they represent uh, different uh, whose who's move it is. So this could be white's move. Circles could be white's. Uh, squares could be black's move. Um, or vice versa, depending on whose turn it is and so on uh, at this initial spot. And so let's say we have an initial board, and there are two moves that could be made. Followed, and if you make this move, there are two responses. And if you make this move, there are two responses. And if, let's say, you make this move, there are two responses. And we cut off the tree here because we are only searching a certain depth. And we call this a, de a ply. This is ply, uh, you can consider this ply 0, ply 1, ply 2. There we go, ply 3, ply 4, or whatever it is. Okay, so here's how, uh, and then each one of these circles or squares is considered a node. It's a chess position. A move was made, and this is a certain chess position. So there's many, many nodes. There's all the nodes at the bottom, plus all the nodes on every single layer. You add them all up, and that's how many nodes have been uh, evaluated. Um, and also notice, that this is an accurate representation in that only the outcomes at the bottom are have an evaluation rating. The engine did not bother rating all of these other moves. And the reason is, imagine a certain scenario. Let's say I could take out my opponent's queen, but in doing so, they could make a move which would, make, which would be checkmate on me. Now, all I do is I don't look at that first initial move. I could take the queen. That would be this kind of move, the very first move. I can take a queen. Great move. 
No, I look at the outcome and say, ha, if I take the queen, it's checkmate. So look at the outcome and then that. So let's say this was the outcome and the outcome says terrible idea and that should return to the taking a queen as a terrible idea. Even though taking a queen initially sounds great, it turns out to be disastrous. So what we do is we go to the end, we rate that and those ratings return certain values which rate the above scenarios. So that is a, a generalization of, uh, of how we rate it. And uh, if you were just to come up with a simple algorithm that would say my move, then your move, then my move, then your move, and just make them and rate the outcome, and then pick the, pos the best line of moves. Um, let's say it was this line here. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, to this 15 here at the bottom. If you were to do that, you would find that the engine would find the best move, the uh, most uh, promising uh, line of thought, to be its best move followed by your worst move, followed by its best move, followed by your worst move. And obviously, from the engine's perspective, that would be the quickest way to achieve a checkmate or something like that, or a huge advantage, is you make terrible moves, I make great The engine makes great moves. And so it will come up with that as your best move. And so Mini Max was designed to try to overcome this. And it's basically, uh, you could think of it as uh, maximizing the minimum gain uh, would be a way to say it. it's, uh, uh, I would recommend uh, checking it out on places like Wikipedia, some other sites. But basically, it's a way to overcome this to say, okay, pick my best move followed by your best move, followed by my best move, followed by your best move. And then the outcome of all that, pick the best option. And so um, that's kind of, uh, uh, maybe not technically correct, but that's a, a way of seeing how Minimax can overcome that situation. And that's why uh, chess engines must use some form of Minimax, some way of, uh, of not just uh, picking uh, a move that makes you makes it think that uh, the human is no good and the engine is great. So it has to come up with a reasonable line of thought. And it's just like we're playing. Uh, if you're actually playing a game, you say, I could do this, and you look for their best response in return. You don't look for their suicide response because they won't make that response. And you needn't even evaluate that suicide response because you can just assume that won't be made. And if it is made, you're happy with that move. So um, that is where alpha beta pruning comes in. Because you see, uh, this search tree, although this is a very simplistic search tree where there's only about two off responses for every position, and sometimes only one, as in this case, and this case here with the 15 and the three, um, in reality, there is an average of about 30 positions, uh, possibilities per, for every move. Um, and so this tree grows exponentially, as you can see. But when you have 30, it grows super, super exponentially. And it gets absolutely ridiculous to the point that um, from your initial starting board, if you go one ply, that means uh, just my move. Two ply would be my move followed by your move. So one ply, you would have 20 positions you have to analyze because there's 20 possible moves you can make. If you go two ply, there is 400 uh, uh, possibilities. If you go three ply, that's my move, your move, my move, there's 8,902 moves. And if you keep this up, if you go, let's say, seven uh, deep, you're looking at over three billion uh, possibilities. And obviously, chess engines think more than seven billion uh, or seven ply deep, and so, but they do not search three billion moves when they search seven ply deep. They have a special way of pruning a tree, and in essence, it's just the way we think. We think, ah, they won't make that suicide move. Uh, that would just be terrible for them. We won't analyze any future moves on that train of thought. I'll just ignore that for now, and so on. 
And so alpha beta pruning is a way of saying, ah, we don't need to evaluate that. Um, that won't uh, uh, affect our results. And the, the caution with pruning is you want to make sure that you don't cut off branches. Let's say I, I cut off this branch here. I don't want to cut off that branch if this could be a promising lead. But I do want to cut it off if there won't be any uh, promising leads down there. And so alpha, uh, alpha beta pruning is a way which theoretically never cuts off a branch that could have uh, the best move in it. Um, it will be a perfect pruning system. And uh, that is, I guess, dependent on the rating, that the rating provided was accurate. But supposing that rating is accurate, uh, that's a footnote that must be uh, uh, noted, um, then alpha beta pruning is technically 100% correct and it will go through less moves. And check out this website in the description below. It will show you how you start off with your initial board um, and two values are always, uh, two or three values are always recorded. Uh, there's an alpha uh, value, a beta value, and whatever the rating is. So three values are recorded um, and kept track of. And uh, you can see that it goes down, comes up with a rating, it makes a different move, comes up with a rating, and so on. And then it returns a three to the previous ones. And uh, so on. Then it goes down a whole nother train of th thought, um, slowly expanding. But here you see it drew a line it said, oh, we don't care. Whatever this is, it won't affect our uh, results. Um, and so it chops it off. And you'll see by the time you hit the bottom, there are different things that have been chopped off at different levels. Here's one, here's one. And so whatever followed this is not accounted for. Even if what followed this had a million possibilities, all those million possibilities are uh, not analyzed. And so it, it greatly speeds up your chess engine because you don't have to check every position. And that's exactly how a human thinks. So check out this website to get uh, further details. Um, it's, a, it's a very big, complicated uh, program. What I would suggest you do is if you do try to come up with your own algorithm, what I would highly recommend is punching in these exact ratings. Don't get it to automatically rate, but punch in these ratings and check at each level that it asks for a rating and check, does it cut it off here? Does it ask for this rating which it shouldn't have? Um, and make sure that when you punch in all of these numbers, it does cut off at the proper locations. This tree diagram is accurate and um, so Test that and check if you come up with an identical uh, tree given the identical ratings for every board position. So analyze that um, and if your board, if your rating or uh, um, algorithm is accurate to all of these things, then you have a trustworthy algorithm and you can also look on Wikipedia and other places which have different tree diagrams um, and cut off locations. Um, and you can uh, do a bit of a double check that way. So that's a brief intro into mini max and alpha beta pruning. Alpha beta pruning is actually a combination of mini max, the way I have it written. It's a combination of mini max and alpha beta all in one. It's not two separate uh, things. And so um, hopefully this had made some sense and you understand at least some of the reasons why uh, mini max and alpha beta pruning are used in a chess engine. So uh, please do some more reading and research. This is a complicated, uh, complicated topic and uh, didn't want to spend too long describing every little detail of this, um, but uh, provided uh, the best page I know of for research and again, uh, just a special thank you to uh, Bruce Rolson for this uh, uh, excellent uh, webpage. So until next time, enjoy chess.